Well, here we are. We're finally down to the number one item in the top 10 oddities in MS Project. Oddity number one, expanding and indenting with filters on. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Which kind of makes us anti anticlimactic. Sorry, but for me, the number one oddity, well, irritation, is how filtering works in Project 2010. I love the auto filter feature and how it looks like Excel, but filtering itself, how it works in Project 2010, its quirks can drive you nuts. It's caused by how the new database engine works, and I'm sure this is unavoidable. I sure do miss how the filter feature worked in previous versions. So, I'm going to have to demonstrate what's going on here with an example. Let me start up Microsoft Project, and I'm going to go into the backstage and pick new. I'm going to go for some templates. I'm going to go for plans and proposals, business plans, and I'm going to scroll down to the residential construction template. There it is. We'll click on it, open it up, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the timeline. To do that, I'm going to go to the View tab, find the timeline checkbox, clear it. And what I want to do is I want to find tasks that have the word contracts in it. So I click on the Auto Filter button, go to Filters, and I'm going to go down to Custom. And I'm going to pick Contains, and I'm going to put in the word Contract. And I'm going to click OK. We got what we were looking for, tasks that have the word contract in it, and it was just a single task. Now in the prior versions of MS Project, when you hit the minus sign and then expand again, you'd see all the subtasks that were available. That's not how it works in this version. It's a little different. So with this version of Microsoft Project, the database filter is always running, unless you shut it off. So what I'm going to show you is a trap here that occurs when you do indenting with the filter on. So I still have the filter on, as you can see, and I found the task I'm looking for. And I decide I'm going to insert some additional tasks. I'm going to insert them above the task I'm looking for. So drop in three rows. And the first one's going to be draft contract. The second one will be print contract. And then the third one will be call owner attorney. And I decide I'm going to drop in a summary task. So I hit insert and I'm going to call it work with attorneys. And I highlight the task I want to indent. Go back to the task tab. Find the indent button. And look what happened. Now what I might do is I might go, what? And I might say, well, I must have missed that task. Let me put that in there again. Call owners attorneys. So did you catch what happened here? The filter's always running. And as soon as I hit the indent, it made one of the rows disappear. So I've actually got call owners attorney in here twice. And if I take the filter off, there you go. There's the second one. See how subtle that was? This thing with the filter always being on will just drive you crazy. So let's run that again. Go to the filter, down to custom, look for the contains button, put in contract. And there you see, they've disappeared again. Let's do it a little differently. Suppose we decided we were going to get fancy. We're going to open up another window so we can see the task without a filter on. So go to the view tab, go to new window, See my residential construction plan sitting there, and I'm going to open up another window. So now I have two windows open with the same plan, and I decide I'm going to turn the filter off. Now I can see all my tasks. If I go back to my original window, looks like the filter's still on. But notice the filter button's gone. I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, because as soon as I shut off the filter here, it took it off the display here, but the filter's still active, which is very strange. So if I decide to add in some more tasks, call cleaner, and I decide to indent that single task, guess what? Filter's still on. So you got to watch this, because you'd look and say, well, wait a minute, maybe I thought the filter's off, and the task is gone as soon as you indented it. And if you come back in here, and you clear all the filters, of course, you're going to know what happened to that task. If you notice when we typed it in, it had row number 100 and something on it, 115. It's all the way at the bottom. And as soon as I hit indent, it became a subtask of the last task in the schedule, complete punch list items. And now punch list items became a summary item. It's all very strange how these new features work in Project. The filter will drive you absolutely crazy. All I can say is, the first time you use it, you'll get burned. But at least now that you've seen what happens, uh, depending on where you put the new task in the list, if you put it above what you're filtering on, for example, again, going back to Filters, Custom, Contains, and we'll put in Contract as the filter. Again, if you put it above, 
it's going to do something different than if you put it below. And again, if you pay attention to the row numbers, you might get a hint as to what's going on, as to where your task may have went. So if you think you're going crazy, and later on when you pull off the filters and you find the same task in there twice, and maybe three times, maybe even at the bottom of your schedule, at least now you'll have an idea what's going on. The filter's always running, and as soon as you indent or do an undo, it kicks in. Trust me, you won't catch this when it happens to you the first time. What you'll do is you'll retype them, think you missed them, Later they'll appear. You'll think you're going crazy. Well, you are. <laughs> Even worse, if instead of adding the rows in the middle, you have added them at the bottom like I did here and the filter kicks in, they'll go to the bottom. You may not see them until much later, perusing a different part of a schedule. Worse yet, you may have printed it out and given it to somebody, and they'll point it out to you and make you feel really bad. Oddities indeed. Well, there you have it. I hope it's clear that the two biggest things to watch out for is when you turn on a filter and when you use the sort. And when you use either one of these things, make sure you're very careful whenever you indent, hide a column, or click undo. Because it kicks the database engine on and it'll resort your data and it'll filter it out. Other than that, this is actually a very fine version of MMS Project. So, I hope this was clear. Watch out for your filters, watch out for your sorts, or you may end up as burnt toast. Hope this was helpful. That's my top 10 items. To see more, go to my website at thegazeofmethod.com. Visit this for other tips and other presentations and other training options. And rewatch this video and other videos related to Microsoft Project. Take care.